Wow, well, there he is, Ooh, a questioner. <laughs> Father, would you like to comment on the differences in the uh, pertinence of charismatic prayer, of intercessory prayer, and the church's prayer of the hours? <laughs> well, come on. You know, <laughs> you know what I should say to you? It's all in here. <laughs> Look, it's all really all in there. But let us try to, because these are valid uh, distinctions, of course. But to me, I think, and I think this is the genius of the catechism here. It, at least to put it this way, moves in that direction. In the direction that you should, <clears throat> in that sense, minimize those distinctions. With the distinctions in prayers, you are merely underlining certain aspects of a specific prayer situation. But prayer is only one. It is a dialogue. Whose dialogue? It is the dialogue between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It is the Trinitarian dialogue that is God, you see. This conversation, this divine conversation that is going on at every moment, this divine song, this eternal symphony at every moment, the, the, the music of eternity, the music of absolute love that is the life of the Trinity. This is the conversation that is prayer. St. Paul says, we do not know how to pray. Creation groans. Even the prayer of a need, whatever the need may be, your health, the health of another person, a, a parking place. Whatever it may be, it's part of that groaning. It's our song. Our song seeking to be part of, uh, of this other song. But we do not know how to. The Spirit, he says, in our heart, teaches us how to pray. How? By making its groaning its noises, its sounds, St. Paul says. Having them originate because of the Spirit from within you, <laughs> integrating your groaning into the Trinitarian groaning. The groaning of a creation that, that hopes desperately for liberation. You see, that is that is the prayer. It is when that matches the groaning, if I may use that word, St. Paul dares to speak in such terms, the sounds, in indescribable sounds that the Spirit makes or something like that, that are the divine conversation, the divine song, the Trinitarian prayer. So, and, and I think where there is a prayer of intercession, a prayer of thanksgiving, a charismatic prayer, all prayer is charismatic by that definition. If the Spirit is not engaged in it, then there's nothing. It's babble. It's not a true groaning in, in accordance with the Trinitarian song. So all prayer has to be charismatic. Prayer of praise, the liturgy of the hours in which the church must pray ceaselessly because there is no other. I mean, a Christian life without prayer is not a Christian life. See, look how this all organized. Morality, morality is acted prayer. You see, everything is this prayer. Everything is this conversation. Because everything is grace and everything is love. I think seeing them all as different manifestations of the one reality is, uh, is, is an improvement. However, if you want the traditional distinctions, they're in here by the book. 
we are running out of time and I want to say something before our final, uh, our final show. Thank you all of you very much for participating in this series, all of you. And our musician, our painter, <coughs> you know, the uh, French writer Peguy. <laughs> Peguy, Peguy. Uh, we very, this is a classy show then. He said, well, you know something? Faith may not be very uh, widespread today. Alas, Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith? Well, faith may not be widespread today, but what is there? is better than it's ever been because it had never before been tested so much. Never before had it been subjected to such a rel relentless, devastating criticism intellectually and practically. And yet, hey, you are here? He's here? Painter is here. Hey, we're here. And we are doing here at the service of this faith. So uh, I agree with Pegui. It's pretty good. In the past, maybe there was nothing better to do on a day like today. So you trot it on to the parish. Everyone here has something better to do. Except, except, except for the faith that convinces us that coming here, we will give glory to Jesus Christ and encounter him. That faith is much stronger today because of this than it ever was. So my suggestion to the Lord when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Is well, hurry up. Uh, if you come now, you will. Thank you very much.